Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and we're coming at you here from my house with some breaking news. The Las Vegas Raiders have made a little bit of a move today. They went out and they signed running back, and bear with me real quick, running back Austin Walter. Also, they have moved linebacker Kyler Fackrell to the reserve slash injured list. So what we're going to do here today is I'm going to tell you a little bit about Walter, what you can expect from him at Raiders training camp, and how exactly he's going to fit into this overall dynamic of this Raiders running back room. Maybe he makes a 53-man roster, maybe he doesn't. I'll also talk about the linebackers and how Kyler Fackrell being out could actually impact his ability to make this team's roster. And for those of you that know that watch the show, I'm a big fan of Fackrell. At least I thought he was going to be a pretty good player for the Raiders overall with this Patrick Graham system. And since I'm at home, some of y'all are like, why the hell is this guy rocking a tank? I got a tattoo yesterday, so if you watch until the very, very end of the video, I'll uh, let you see what that looks like. So in terms of the Raiders making this move here today, you're going to get a running back who played college football at Rice and realistically does not have too much NFL experience. So last season, he was with the San Francisco 49ers, and he's bounced around a few other practice squads, if you will, but he also was with the Jets last year. And in those four games that he was in, that he got some reps with the Jets, he had 26 carries for 101 yards and one touchdown. Walter also, as a UDFA with the Niners all the way back in 2019, played in nine career games, rushed 27 times for 104 yards and a touchdown, also three grabs for 36 yards. The reason why this is interesting to me, at least a little bit, is because why another running back, right? Like, if you could make me an, I don't know, an argument that you can go out and maybe add another linebacker, maybe like a Javen White, because the Jets, they just released him. I thought he was overall a pretty athletic linebacker at times last season. I think a move like that would have actually made a little bit more sense. So what I want you guys to do right now is go down to the comment section and give me your one-word reaction to the Raiders adding Walter, because... Austin Walter is not really a running back that I've heard much about. Before I hopped on today's video, I tried to watch some tape about him. He's a very meh type of running back, which maybe is going to end up being my overall reaction to going out and getting him. So in terms of now what you're going to be looking for in training camp, I am excited because the Hall of Fame game is going to be on Thursday. Raiders take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. For those that don't know, I go live for every preseason game and... I'm, I'm excited to get back into some regular football watch party. So if you haven't already subscribed to the Raiders Report, please make sure you do. Not only do we give you videos, we usually have a lot more graphics, but today at Chat Sports, the entire team, minus me because I don't golf, is out doing a golfing tournament. So that's kind of why I'm stuck here at home and we don't have all the you know cool graphics that we usually have. But I promise you, for watch parties, for a whole bunch of other shows, we... Uh, We'll have you all covered there, so please tune in. I'm hoping that we get you know up to 60 to 100,000 people that are watching. We're going to be playing a whole bunch of games, and we're going to be having a really good time. And if you hear anything weird in the background, it's Chuck, my dog. He's like, wait a minute, why aren't you giving me any attention? Let's keep on talking about, though, Walter here in terms of some of his college production. He's from Texas. Played four seasons from 2015 to 2018 at Rice University. Was named All-Conference USA Honorable Mention in his final two years. And during his collegiate career at Rice, 345 carries, played in 49 games, 1,744 yards, 13 touchdowns. Also, 79 grabs for 803 yards and five touchdowns. So then you think about all the other running backs here in the room. You got Josh Jacobs as your number one. I'm curious because Zamir White really hasn't been practicing whatsoever. But to me, the more and more tape that I watch on Walter tells me that he's probably better as a pass catcher than he is a between-the-tacklers runner. However, the Raiders have Brandon Bolden, who they signed this past offseason, who had over 40 catches last year in Josh McDaniels' system in, with New England. Plus, Kenyon Drake has just been cleared. He's apparently ready to go. He looks like he might get some chances to play in the preseason. He's going to be regular or ready by the regular season. The Raiders, though, they drafted Britton Brown out of UCLA. And 
not 100% sure where those guys stack up. And then you got Amir Abdullah. From what I've seen, I don't think Walter is better than any of these players here. Now, maybe they think that he's got some special teams value, which sure, then I can make the argument. But if there's one position that I feel like the Raiders are kind of okay at, was running back. So I'm going to be honest with y'all. This move is a little bit of a head scratcher to me. But I got to trust McDaniels. I got to trust this regime because they've done a lot of good stuff overall this upcoming season. Now, let's also now move our direction to this conversation to Kyler Fackrell because I just released literally, what, 35 minutes ago, a video about my updated Raiders 53-man roster projection video. Fackrell was one of those five linebackers that made it. I had Divine Diablo. Denzel Perriman, Jayon Brown, those are your clear-cut top three guys. And then I said, all right, Kyler Fackrell deserves to be thrown into that mix with Kenny Young. The reason why I say might want to pump the brakes here a little bit on this Kyler Fackrell hype train making the team, it's because Darian Butler. Darian Butler, the UDFA out of Arizona State, has been very impressive. And I talked about it on my show on Locals this past week. I've been bringing his name up for about two weeks now. And I said during a random Raiders mailbag, somebody asked me, okay, if there was one UDFA that you think could end up making the team, who would it be? I said Darian Butler. And the reason why I said is because I had him as a draftable grade. He's about 5'10", 225 pound linebacker. And when I say draftable grade, every single year we look at our draft analysis and stuff like that. And, you know, is the guy a first rounder, second rounder? Well, I had Butler as the seventh rounder. Now, sure, seventh rounder. But that's still draftable. On top of that, from Arizona State, there for what, four years from 2018, 19, 2020 to 2021, his linebackers coach was Antonio Pierce. Antonio Pierce coached him for all four years. He is now the new Raiders linebacker coach. So in terms of what does it take for a rookie to realistically make it right away? Yes, there's a huge learning curve, which nobody's surprised about when you talk about college football, Pac-12 football, and now you're in the NFL. But that learning curve might be a little bit easier for somebody who's working with a coach that they've worked with for the past four years. So this move, I think, actually really, really helps out Darian Butler. So here's going to be my question to everyone out there watching right now. If you could only keep either Kyler Fackrell or Darian Butler... For the 53-man roster, let's say it gets down to that point, who would you end up keeping? Type in Butler or type Fackrell, or you can just type B or F. That's totally fine as well to make it a little bit easier on y'all. Now, I know that a lot of people have been tuning in, watching the Raiders report, and don't get me wrong, man. I'm super, super excited for the regular season, and I'm excited to see what we can continue to do here and continue to grow this show. Now, I told y'all, if you make it to the end of the vid, I'll show you the new tattoo I got. So for those that do not know, I'm a big, big old family guy. Uh, you know, I lost my grandfather about almost two years ago at this point. He passed away on November 17th back in 2020. And it's been a tough thing for my family. But on his tombstone, which is actually funny enough why I wear my chains. So if you guys ever see my chain, it's prayer hands. And I was able to get prayer hands here so if you guys want to see who did it i know it's kind of difficult to see but uh it's on my instagram please go check it out it's on my ig story my guy miguel did say if he gets some people to message him raiders and if you guys give him a follow that he would do a live raiders tattoo on my leg on the show i know a lot of people have been like hey mitch when are you going to get the shield or when are you going to get something raiders related well here's your opportunity to help me out here a little bit because and well, tattoos aren't that cheap. So if you guys want me to get the Raiders tat, go to my Instagram, give my guy a follow, spam Raiders in the comments because I'm not going to lie, I would like to get something as well. All right, let's go through this one more time and then I'm going to wrap it up here. I got I got some errands I got to run because today is my off day and well, the whole chat sports team, they're out golfing. So the Las Vegas Raiders... Out of the new running back today, his name is Austin Walter. Not 100% sure if he ends up making the team. I don't think he's going to make the team. I don't even think he's going to make the practice squad. I kind of wish, again, that they would have used this extra linebacker spot, potentially go out and get a guy like Javen White. Obviously, with $24 million of spending salary cap space, I was hoping it would have been a bigger name like, a, like an Indomitian Sue or Jamie Collins or something like that. So be it. But the fact that Fackrell now ends up on the reserve injured list, I would be a little bit worried about his overall future. Now, sometimes when they do that, 
you know, they're, they're trying to plan for him actually be on the team and use up that reserve spot. It doesn't really impact the 53. But the day to keep in mind, remember, for all reserve players here, Jonathan Hankins, I uh, talked to him today, actually. He plans on being okay for the regular season. It sounds like Bilal Nichols with his knee injury. Sounds like he's going to be ready to go by the regular season. Trayvon Mullins, the coin flip to me, though. He says he's going to be ready, but I've done this whole game with Trayvon for long enough. So we'll see what happens there. But then the day to keep in mind, circled on your calendars, please remember, is August 23rd. August 23rd. If these players who are going to reserve injured list are not able to participate by August 23rd or then have to spend the first four weeks off, okay? Keep that in mind because it's a very important date. All right, y'all, much love to the nation out there. Appreciate everyone who tuned in. Hopefully, y'all have an amazing, amazing time for the rest of your week. And I got a video coming out tomorrow, which obviously, right, we put a video out every single day. But just keep tabs, keep those notifications on. Make sure you're subscribed and enjoy your weekend, y'all.